know. I know. Why did I come to this church? I know. We make people hug. Hug someone. Hug someone you don't know. I'm going to back up just a little bit. Come on, hug someone, hug someone, hug someone. Come on. I'm going to get you guys hugging. Okay, I got you guys hugging. It's cool. All right. Man, we started this new series. Thank you, Media Fam, for all that you do back there. Seriously. That is not a, a easy, easy job. We just celebrated four years married. Whoa, come on, four years of me getting on her nerves and her giving me grace, so I'm grateful. So we just started a brand new series, babe. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? Yes. I forgot I had notes. I was like, wow, we're in worship. <laughs> yes, well, good morning, everyone. So good to see all of y'all's faces. Look at the room. This is Come awesome. on. <laughs> you guys actually look awake. You know, sometimes awesome. you go in church and it's kind of like, can I say this from the platform? It's kind of dry. <laughs> no, I can't say that. In I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. Huh? I'm good. He said, put the mic near your mouth. No. Okay. 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 Thank you, Jacob. Okay. Um, so yeah, we started a new single, uh, a new single, a new series oh. called... <laughs> Don't tell them like a sing. new series called Single to Married. Single yeah. to Married. Um, and so we're really talking about here in part one, the power couple. The you power know, couple. and when we're talking about the power couple, we're talking about a couple who is after God, a kingdom couple, yeah. right? Because yeah. we really wanted to for a lack of a better term, come for or debunk the way the world defines a power, power couple, couple, right? Oftentimes the world will define a power couple by, you know, what they dress, their attire, their possessions and things of that sort. And so we really want to grab biblical context mm -hmm. for who is a power couple? What are some things? And, and even through our notes last week, we put, started part one, yeah. you know, there's so much in here that we can add, but the, these were just some things that we really felt like the Lord had highlighted to where we were like, okay, these are some attributes, if you will, to a kingdom couple. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a beautiful uh, part one. And, you know, we, we really just emphasized the importance of understanding that as two people, individuals that are married, but both of them are on fire for the Lord. So a power couple is not two, pe two, two people in a relationship who make a ton of money or they're super influential or they're famous on TikTok, flip flop, whatever y'all using. It's not that, but it's a power couple who is fully empowered by the Holy Spirit and walking his ways, walking his word, walking his truth, walking his thoughts, all of those things. So our only motive in this series is really dedicated to the singles, the dating, the engaged and the married people. So that way we can be kingdom couples, kingdom singles, kingdom fiancés, kingdom uh, uh, courtship relationship, right? I want to know really quickly, if you're a single in the room, make some noise. Come on. Y'all could do better than that. Your wife may be here. Okay. All right. If you're in a relationship, if you're in a courtship relationship, raise your hand. Let me see. Make some noise. Come on. Okay. Okay. All right. If you're engaged, come on, make some noise real quick. Let's go. Come on. I love it. Look, he, he's, a, he's a proud man. I love that. Come on. Now, if you marry, y'all better take over this building. Come on. Make some noise. If you Let's go. Come on. So we're going to have some fun today. Uh, man, last week, what was the first, uh, you do the first two points and just read the title and I'll uh, do the next two points and then we could kick off today's teaching. Okay, so we had to start off and we we did seven, well, it's going to be eight in total. Yeah, eight. Um, just keys to prepare or yeah. to be a power couple, right? Because these are things that you can apply here and now, mm -hmm. right? Like you just said, there's singles in the room, there are people who are courting, dating, you know, engaged all the way to married. And so yeah. these are things that we've implemented while we were single and we yeah. still carry throughout being married, mm -hmm. you know? And so the first one was a personal life fully immersed in Christ. Yeah. Um, number two was praying together. Yep. Number three was learning together. Mm -hmm. And number four was serving together. That was a powerful one. Yeah. Just understanding that you have to be, you know, you should be fully immersed in God and, and the should be, we gave a lot of grace with that because a lot of times we measure our relationship with the Lord with our neighbors or maybe our spouse. 
And we got real vulnerable and real honest that there was times in my marriage where I compare my relationship with the Lord um, with my wife. And I'm like, man, she's a heavy dreamer, a heavy, heavy prophetic voice. So she had dreams. And we was in church one time when we were engaged. She was like, I saw Jesus walk up to me. He had holes in his hand. I'm like, great. <laughs> I got a goosebump. Like, awesome. And I was like, man, this is great, right? So I started comparing myself to my wife. And I thought I was less spiritual yeah. instead of just learning from her. And I said, hey, babe, how did you? Like, what did you do in your week that you were able to experience Jesus in that way? So I started to learn from my mouth, uh, from, from my mouth. I started to learn from my wife as a husband, as a husband. Because a lot of times as husbands, we get told that you can't learn from your wife because you're the head of the home. And since you're the head of the home, what you say goes. We got security, so if the men chase me down, y'all got my back, right? All right, cool. Now, but it's so important to understand it's a mutual submission. It's a mutual uh, love. It's a mutual connection. Uh, yes, there's biblical order in the home. The husband is the patriarch of that family. He's the head of the house. However, he still can submit to his wife, and we're going to talk about that kicking off with number five. So if you have notes, please take notes. Please take some notes. This is going to strengthen your relationship. If you've heard it before, studied it before, still take notes some more. I believe we can never stop growing. A, a business guy named Charlie Munger, he said, whenever you're through growing, you're through. I don't want to be through. I want to keep growing. How many, wanna, how many people want to keep growing? Just raise your hand. Come on. So take some notes. Share with your friend, uh, a, a gentleman, a man of God in our church, Windu. He made this huge post of what he took away from Sunday. And me and my wife, we're just looking at it like, what in the world? I'm like, he posted on Facebook. He said, hey, this is what I learned from church. I thought it was like one little point and he had a, maybe 30, 40 points on Facebook. And I was like, that's so beautiful to see a man of God cherishing the word of God as he prepared for marriage, as he prepared for marriage. So what's number one, but really number five? <laughs> yes, number five. So we're going to start. Should we we'll pray? Continue. Let's yes. pray. All right. Yeah. You want to pray? Uh, sure. I should me, Go you, ahead. which one? You go Rock, ahead. paper, scissors? No, I'm fine. You pray. <laughs> okay. You pray. Let's do it. So, Lord, we just thank you so much, Jesus, for who you are, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for your spirit, Lord. And we just surrender this time to you, Jesus. I thank you for the notes that you have given us, Lord. But we ask that you would just even surpass our notes, Lord. You see what each and every person in this room needs, Lord, and you know how to minister to their heart. And so, Lord, we just surrender our, our mouths to you, Lord. And we thank you for your spirit of wisdom. We thank you for revelation, Lord. And we just um, thank you for this time together. And so we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's do it. Alrighty, so we're going to be talking, uh, number five is submit together. And mm -hmm. you know, when we were um, preparing this, I was just asking the Lord, what is one thing that really stands out about, you know, a kingdom couple, a yeah. power couple? And I felt like I heard the Lord say it's their ability to submit together, that a power couple, a kingdom couple, mm -hmm. one thing, a strength of theirs is their ability to actually submit together. Yeah. And I think this is one of those words that um, you know, in the world's eye, it's either has been tainted, unfortunately, or in another breath, it's something that's only projected towards women. Mm. And, you know, while half of that is true, because there is obviously biblical context when it comes to submission and for women, but I really want to speak to and just highlight um, a couple's ability to first submit to God, but then to submit to each other, yeah. because we see biblical context for that, right? Being first submitted under God, yeah. but then sub mutual submission in marriage, right? Because because once you are married, you are seen as one under God, wow. yeah. right? And so there's this dance and this 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 journey of the two becoming one, right? Where the Lord sees the both of you now married as one. Mm. And so we have to gain some context for what does submission look like? Yeah. What does it mean? Um, and so if you're taking notes in simplest form, the word submit, it simply means to come under, right? So it's the act of accepting. I love this definition. It says accepting or yielding, accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will and authority of another person. Wow. And I think that's so powerful because in simplest form, you're saying, okay, I'm submitting to the Lord's will for my life. Yeah, I'm submitting yeah. to my husband's direction as he submitted to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that more. Um, and so it's really important for, um, for you to gain some order and context for what does a biblical marriage look like when it comes to submitting, yeah. right? Because there's order and structure within 
a biblical marriage. And so you have to implement that structure or be aware of that structure so that you know what to submit to, how to submit, who am I submitting to, right? And so when you think about a kingdom, every kingdom has principles, they have structure, they have order, right? You think about the, the UK, the United Kingdom, right? There is an order there so that it projects a vision and so that it projects also its mission for that actual kingdom, right? And so when we think about the kingdom of God, when we think about marriage, we see biblically that there is order. There is structure to God's overall design for his covenant and what it means for two to become one and to be unified under God, right? And so I want to read 1 Corinthians 11.3. This is in the English Standard um, Translation, and this is Paul speaking, and he says, in context to marriage, he says, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Wow. And wow. I love that because we see this picture and i know you have amazing revelation on this hey god so good <laughs> but, but i'm reading i'm reading your notes these are powerful Thank Come you. Um, but we see this context where when we're thinking about submission and we're thinking about order, we're mm -hmm. thinking about structure within a marriage, yeah. we have the ruler who is God, mm -hmm. we have the head who is Jesus Christ, and then the structure that follows, and that's the husband. Also, you can think of him as the patriarch, mm -hmm. and then you have the wife, right? And so a power couple, they need to establish who it is that their marriage is actually built on, because ultimately this determines who you are submitted to. Wow. Right? If we don't gain and you could think of that as a very um, foundational statement, but often it's the foundational things that the enemy comes for. Mm. Because I know for myself, growing up, I didn't understand. Hold on, hold on. You, you can't just drop nuggets like that and just <laughs> breeze past it. Say that one more time. It's the foundation. It's the foundational things that the enemy comes for. Wow. You know, and so having a, having an understanding of okay, God That's is the powerful. ruler of our marriage. Jesus Christ is the head of our marriage. My husband submits to Jesus. I mm. submit to my husband. And yeah. we're talking about healthy kingdom, submission. healthy yeah. submission, right? Yeah. And so with that, you have to understand who you have to establish who it is that you are submitting to because that determines who your marriage is built on. Yeah. Right. Amen. And so first we're called to submit to God, and then we're called to submit to each other in marriage. And we gain context for this in Ephesians 5, 21. Mm -hmm. And it says, and further submit one to another out of reverence for Christ. Yeah. And I was, go ahead. It's interesting because I remember I was in a men's group many years ago and we were talking about marriage and all of this stuff. And yeah. they started out with, you know, um, Ephesians 5, 22. Mm -hmm. Like the, it was on a worksheet. So it wasn't like they forgot, but on a worksheet, it said Ephesians 5, 22, but it didn't talk about Ephesians 5, 21, where yeah. it says both of you submit. Yeah. And I was looking at everyone and I was like, okay, like, let's see if they're going to bring it up. And towards the end of the meeting, I said, hey, I said, can we read verse 21? Where the men actually are called to submit to the woman in a marriage out of reverence for Christ. Yeah. And the, the, the whole meeting just... First, I got some side looks, and then they were like, all right, let's just do it. Let's talk about it. And I was like, hey, I want to learn. I'm a husband, so I want to learn how can I submit to my wife. So it's, it's super important to understand that it's a mutual thing. It's a mutual submission in two different ways, and, and, and we're just honoring and reverencing the Lord as we submit to our spouse. And I believe that opens doors to breakthrough within your marriage. It does. It's when it's not just submit to me, woman. But it's like, you know what? Hey, hey, I'm going to submit to you as well. I'm going to volunteer and submit. I'm going to go under the mission that God has placed you in my life. I'm going to I'm going to honor that and I'm going to submit to it. Right. So it's beautiful. So good. No, it's really good. It's true. Um, and, and that verse, you know, different translations. So this one says out of reverence for Christ. Another translation will say out of the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Right. Um, and I remember, well, I want to back up a little bit, but you may be saying, okay, how does this apply to me as a single? Right. You're like, maybe I'm not married yet or whichever the case. And I remember so clearly where in my singleness when, and you know, and we strongly believe in preparing while you're waiting. Yes. Right. And saying, okay, Lord, how do I prepare for the marriage that you have for me? Mm -hmm. Right. And I remember reading Ephesians 5 21 and it says and further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ mm -hmm. and I was like wait Lord if that means to fear you if that means to respect you this is something that I could practice here and now because ultimately when you think about it how you 
submit, my reflection of how I submit to my husband is a reflection of my me fearing the Lord. Wow. Right? It's saying how I ultimately submit to the direction, the the counsel, the, you know, what you're hearing from the Lord and et cetera. That's me being able to yield to that. Like we yeah. talked about earlier with defining submission, me being able to accept that, me being able to yield to that. It's a reflection of me fearing the Lord. Yeah. It's a reflection of me reverencing who God is. Right? And so having a revelation of what it means to reverence God is so important. And you can practice that here and now. Mm. Right. Um, another thing is um, I want to read Isaiah 119. And I love this because we get a picture also of that submission. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Mm. And I love this because you have those two words, willing and obedient. Wow. And when I look at this verse, I see willingness as a heart posture. I see willingness as saying, okay, I'm Lord, I'm Lord going to give you my yes in my heart mm -hmm. first, right? But then I'm going to actually obey outwardly yeah. because yeah. I know you can submit having an ill heart. You can submit having a bitter heart yeah. or whichever the case, an right? example is, yeah. you know, uh, when we first got married, my wife, was, I know it turned into a disco show, but just stay focused. This is discipleship training. We're trying to make sure you're paying attention. Yeah. So, but, you know, um, when we first got married, you know, there'd be things that you ask of me. And, and, you know, if she says something like, hey, would you mind doing the laundry? You know, to be obedient, you can be obedient with a nasty heart. So I can say, okay, I got you. But then I could be grumping as I'm throwing the clothes, right? Yeah. How, how many people did? No. Just me, okay? Like you take the clothes, throw them in, and you just dry them, slam the door, and just bam, and then it just spins. And you're like, I did it, honey. And he walk in the bathroom. I can't believe she asked me to do it. I was at work all day. And all of that stuff, you obeyed, yes, but you lost what God was going to bless you with, meaning uh, the promotion of your marriage, because why? You weren't willing. So it's willing and obedient. So my mentor taught me whoever you are behind closed doors is who you really are. So you can't talk behind your spouse back as you're trying to obey and serve the family and believe that God is still going to honor you for it. Yeah. Because although she or he didn't see it, right, for the wife, he, for the, for the man, she, we believe in two genders. And, and okay, I'm not going to go there. All right. I'm sorry, we're a real church. But anyway, you know, for us, you know, you can't expect the fruit to eat the fruit of the lamb, the land when we're disobeying and we're being unwilling to submit in the way God told us to. So this is something that we can practice as today. Yeah. You know, when you're cooking that Sunday meal or whatever you're going to do for your family today or this week, you can practice to be willing and to be obedient. And it's not this horrible attitude when it comes to serving your family, but sometimes you have to talk. Conversation open up the door for revelation conversation opens the door for revelation. So I tell my wife when I'm frustrated with her, I'm tell, I tell my wife when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm overworked, I just go to her and say, hey, when you ask me for this, I can, wait, when you said, hey, can you do the laundry? I thought you were saying you didn't see anything I did today. You guys know what I'm talking about when you're in a relationship and you do a lot. Um, and since they didn't acknowledge what you did, what you would do is misinterpret that, oh, you think I'm just free and you think I could just have all the time in the world. And then we have these poor hearts towards our spouse. So what we've learned to do is communicate that yeah. and say, hey, babe, I just want you like, can you can you talk to me really quickly? Do you do you feel like I could be serving a home better or, or ask those uh, questions last week? Man, go go watch last week's sermon because we had some real great questions that you can ask on a date. And it was some challenging questions to keep your keep your marriage on fire. And for the singles, this is stuff that you can study now. Yeah. You don't have to wait until marriage. Don't wait until you get into marriage to prepare for it. Just like you go through work preparation, you go through a, a football preparation before the season, you go to basketball preparation before the season. We were trained so heavy for basketball before um, season came. And we're just trained and trained and trained. We have pro athletes come and try to teach us and all of this stuff, all for what? The game, the seasons. But in marriage, it's the one thing that we feel like we could just jump into. And then we got the boldness to say, Lord, send me a kingdom spouse, even though I don't want to prepare. No, we, we say, Lord, prepare me, create in me a great husband before I become one. 
Create in me a great wife before I become one. And then open a door for your mom. <laughs> we could just start there. So I was taught, buy my mom flowers. Open a car door for my mom. Call my mom beautiful. Practice serving your mom and serving a woman in your home so when a woman comes before you, it's easy. It shouldn't be labor pains for you to serve your family, although it feels like it sometimes, for me at least. But I had to learn to fall in love with serving the one Jesus got on the cross for. Coming up here on a Sunday morning for us is like, it's cool, we're grateful, but more importantly, we're excited that yesterday we were able to serve our family well. We partied hard, we laughed, we joked, we, we enjoyed, we watched our little movie on bakery. We, watched, we like baking shows and stuff, so we watched that, it was pretty fun. But we were able to clean for each other, help each other, uh, you know, either do the dishes or I did, I did some uh, drying the clothes, she washed the clothes, I dried them. We were able to serve each other because we realized, wait, this is not just my spouse, but this is God's daughter. This is God's son. When you get that revelation, your heart beats a little bit differently. There's a, um, a true care and a carefulness that comes when it comes to serving your family. And we're learning it. We're not pros at it, nowhere near close. We talk about real stuff to you guys because we feel like if we be vulnerable from the platform, what would you do in secret? You could be real vulnerable. You can talk to your spouse about these things. I was thinking about this series and I was like, Lord, I don't want it to be no fluffy marriage stuff. We've heard it. A couple that pray together, stay together. Okay, cool. But you can pray together and still annoy each other so much to the point where you want to run. where you want to hide in your own home. That's a real thing. Real couples go through real stuff. If you want to be a power couple, there's powers of darkness that's trying to destroy you. Do, you. do you realize that? You can't be a kingdom couple without warfare. How many people are experiencing warfare in your relationship? Okay, and if your hand's not up, that's cool. How many people are, just, just for comfort, um, how many people ever experience warfare in your relationship? Okay. Do you realize the reason why the proof, a lot of times, the proof of your warfare is a reflection of your call? So the reason why you go through a lot of marriage problems is because the enemy is hating the fact that y'all are an illustration of Christ in the church. So he tried to get a divided kingdom within the marriage. Remember, Jesus, uh, the enemy tried to change Jesus' mind about us. He said, eat this bread. He said, follow me. I'll show you. I'll take you. i give you. I'll let you be the ruler of the whole earth. He was saying this to him. What was he trying to do? Change Jesus' mind about us so Jesus won't die. So since Jesus died, went through three days of the burial, and then resurrected on the third day, ever since that moment, He's been amplifying trying to turn our hearts against God since he couldn't turn God's heart against us. There's times in our marriage where the enemy was trying to turn me against my wife or my wife against me. How many people, be honest, be vulnerable, in your marriage you ever experienced feeling like your spouse was your enemy? Y'all hands are real low. They like, <laughs> just in case. Just in case. All right. So am I going to the sixth one? Um, no? It's still you? Yeah? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, okay. I just want to go ahead and read uh, Job 22, 21. I love this Let's because we see um, just some fruit of submission mm -hmm. and it says, submit to God and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. Listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. And I love this because we see that submission bring, brings peace. Yeah. 
submission brings unity. And what I was thinking about, I was like, you know, seeing how submission brings peace. A peaceful home oftentimes is a home that is unified. Wow. And then we see in scripture how where there's unity, God commands the blessing. And so ultimately, a marriage who is submitted to God is a marriage who also reaps the blessings of God. Wow. Right? Wow. Um, and I just want to close too, you know, ultimately mutual submit submitting to God first and then to each other. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it should bring a picture of Christ in his church, right? Because we read that in Ephesians 5, 25, right? Yeah. How marriage is an illustration of Christ in the church. And so when people see your marriage in the light of how God created it, yeah. right? We're talking about healthy marriages. Every, and you know, every marriage has their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's no perfect marriage, but it's a marriage who is after God, who is submitted to God. And ultimately it should be a picture of the bride and the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to close with this, um, this um, quote I read in um, Focus on the Family, I thought it was beautiful. And it says, when a Christian husband and wife learn how God has wired them to complement each other in mutual submission, they reflect the love that exists between Christ and his bride. And so ultimately, when you think about submission, right, mm -hmm. it should point to a bigger picture. Because you can get caught up in all of the jazz and all of the stuff. But ultimately, when you think about the fruit of submission, yep. it's saying this, our ability to submit to God than to submit to each other. It points to the bit bigger picture of Christ and his bride, yeah, Christ yeah. and his church. Yeah, right? yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So write that down. Uh, number five is submit together. I want everybody to shout this. Obey together. Obey together. A little bit more bold. Obey together. Obey. Look at your spouse and say, obey with me. <laughs> obey with me, baby. Come on. All right. So I want to talk about submission really quickly, and then I'm going to jump into um, um, obedience. But I wanted yeah. to, because I was thinking about submission and biblical submission, yeah. and I want to share something that was on my heart. Submission is not submission if it's forced. Submission is not submission if it's forced. Let that be freedom for your home. You can't force no one into following you. This is why Jesus is not forcing you to get saved. It's an opportunity. It's a privilege. It's, an, it, it's actually an honor yeah. to submit under the mission that God has ordained. That's pretty cool. The one who created the stars, the, who can turn it from light to day, and the one who created each and every one of us uniquely, and he know every hair that's on your head. And the old preachers say, even the ones that's missing, <laughs> like he knows all of it. He's the one who says, hey, I have a mission for your family. Now you can submit to it if you want to. Yeah. You're pretty special that God Almighty wants to give you a plan for your family. Think about that. All week long, I've just been thinking about how wonderful is God that he actually has a plan for us. You see what I'm saying? So obey together. I want to read Deuteronomy 5.33. And it says, stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long, prosperous lives in the land you are about to enter and occupy. I believe there's a real prosperity blessing upon your family on the other end of your obedience. And when I use prosperity, I'm not just talking financially because you can be financially well, but your heart is sinking. It's possible. It's possible to have the best job in the world, but go home and hate the family God blessed you with. We're a heavy church, so we, we kind of preach heavy stuff. And I feel like Jesus is on the way, so there's no time for games and joking around and we have fun we make you laugh and it's really medicine so when the needle of the truth come in you don't feel it as much but it transforms you it helps but one of the rules that we've made in our home is we're going to be an obedient family two months into marriage two months in into marriage uh as soon as we got married God spoke to us. We had 15 encounters with the Lord, supernatural encounters, whether it was dreams, visions, trances, while I'm staring at into the wall, when my wife was staring at into the wall and she saw the wall turn into a river and it was in front of a Bible college up here. 
we go online, go on Google and type in rivers in Woodland Park. And there was no rivers in Woodland Park. And I'm like, what's going on? It was like a little pond or something. I'm like, she was like, that's not the pond. That's not the pond. The Lord speak to her and say, type in Karis Bible College Pond. And it was a pond outside the school. And it was the same exact pond she never saw a day in her life, but God showed her. We never knew what the inside of this school looked like. And the Lord showed her the inside of the school, how it was made of wood and all of this wood, wood, wood. We're from Brooklyn, New York. There's no wood. <laughs> Not even close. Maybe a wooden bench at a park, but that still don't look like wood. It just looked weird. I don't know. But then God starts speaking to me. Hey, it's time to pack your bags and move to Colorado. After he spoke it, as a newly married couple with not a dollar, not a quarter, not a penny. <laughs> no, we were broke. But as a newly married couple, we said, what is the smartest thing to do? Pack our bags and move. We moved out here with makeup and Bibles, not even clothes. <laughs> Lord, help us. We got clothes now, praise the Lord, but we didn't have no clothes. No car. no car. Matter of fact, our car, the moment, isn't this crazy? The moment we said yes, my wife's car was totaled. Her car was total. My car sounded like a chainsaw, so we wasn't driving it. I was like, there's no way. So I was like, baby, it's over. We're going to have to walk to Colorado. We would have just got here, by the way, if we walked four years ago. We would have just arrived. But I was like, man, what are we going to do? And family was calling us. Friends was calling us. My friends are like, bro, this is a sign. You're not called to go to Colorado. And I was like, bro, John 10, 10 says the enemy come to steal, kill, destroy. But God come to give life and life more abundantly. So I guess it's a sign that God is telling us to go. He's like, well, how are you going to get there? I was like, bro, I don't know, but we're packing up the house. I got to go. We packed up the house. We have boxes to the ceiling because my wife was a makeup influencer. She traveled all over the world. I'd give her free makeup and still. We open the doors, makeup on it. I'm like, how did they, what, how is it here? And they just, he keeps in the makeup. So we had so much makeup in the car and, and we just packed it out. Well, we just packed up the house and my friend calls me two days before we have to leave. And he was like, hey, bro, I don't know what's going on, but you have to come get this car off my lot. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, God told me that you guys are called to start a church and it's not here. It's in, North, uh, it's in um, um, Colorado. You guys got to come get this car and go do what God told you to do. I was like, well, thank God I started packing and I didn't go into freak out mode because we made a decision in my wedding vows. I told her that I'm going to lead the family by obeying God. I said, I won't be the sharpest. I won't be the smartest. I won't be the richest. But I'll tell you one thing. I'll be the most obedient person you've ever met. And I've, I've, I've up kept that vow up until now, and I'm going to keep going and keep going, and we're radical. Ask your spouse, what is it in our marriage that God is telling us to do? Because a lot of times love can be blinding. And because you love someone so much, I've saw it happen where you love someone so much, you say no to the plans God has spoken to you because you love them. Jesus said, in comparison to loving me, hate your family. Everybody was like, that's in the Bible? It's in the Bible. He wasn't saying literally hate them, but he was saying in comparison, if, I, if God tell you to do something, what are you going to do? You step. You step. May your marriage be a marriage that obeys the voice of God over the voice of man, over the voice of your pastors. We're senior leaders of this church. We started this church seven months ago with a team of, how about one, two, Cal, Kira, Jacob, he raised it, five, no, uh, Catherine, Beatrice, Nicole. They wasn't here when we, no, they were here when we launched. How much? Eight people? Seven? Seven people? In turn, eight, my, my daughter. Eight, eight people. And we were like, we're believing God for a coffee shop. Every coffee shop said no. And then one coffee shop said, yes, you guys can have church here. We have 18 chairs and it'd be $300 an hour. Remember that? And we were crazy. I was like, all right, cool. I'm like, I talked to my board 
And my best friend, he was like, you ain't got no money. What are you doing? 300 an hour. Then I came to my senses. I was like, what am I thinking? <laughs> For 18 people. Our team was eight. <laughs> we would have outgrew that building so quick. But we obeyed the Lord. He said, plant the church. We planted. He said, don't plant the church seven years ago. I was going to plant a church seven years ago. And then I had this dream. Well, I said, we're going to plant a church. We're going to build. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. And I looked out into the room, and there was a whole bunch of newborn babies around me. And I woke up. I said, Lord, what was that about? He said, you don't have a team. You don't know what you're doing. And, 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 and you're not ready. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm not sharing that dream ever. <laughs> Never. <laughs> the Lord gave me a dream. That's not one you share, right? You keep that to yourself. I was like, no way. And then we started having dreams, and then Kira started feeling from the Lord, hey, I feel like we're going to get a space in 2023. Yep. We're like, okay, cool. And we were like, well, we said yes before. So we only have one option. Say yes again. We build our life, not perfectly, but our life is built on one word, yes. I think that's my friend in the back. I don't know. I think I see him with the beard. Samuel. Samuel? Is that Samuel? Samuel. I'd have to share the story. This is obedience. So we're in Denver. Where's our church located? One person know where y'all came there. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's no, fine, that's fine. It's fine, it's fine. One person. We got coffee in the back. Nah, no, don't get up for coffee. But we're in Denver. And I tell my wife, I'm like, man, I could really go for some Froyo, some frozen yogurt. Um, and, and we go to frozen yogurt, and it was this couple. And anywhere I go, and if you're a human, you're getting the gospel. So I just preached the gospel to them, um, broke some demonic strongholds. It was a strong, I was about to say a strong service. It was a service. It was a church service. So, but after that, I was like, I don't want Froyo no more. I just want, I want Cold Stone. And so we get in the car, and I'm like, all right, we're going to Cold Stone. And we go to Cold Stone. Now, you know, normally if something's closed, it says closed on the, um, on the GPS app, but it says open. So I'm like, all right, they're open. It's game time. Let's go. We pull up. There's a bunch of cars out there, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm like, yes, I get to get my vanilla ice cream with the graham cracker cookies and the strawberry. Whew, I'm thinking about it now. Okay. And I'm like, man, I'm so excited. So we're sitting there, and, and we get out the car. And I see my friend Sammy back there. He's like, aren't you guys the pastors up in Woodland Park? And I'm like, who? I'm like, our church is tiny. I'm like, There's, I'm like, what? And he was like, man, my wife watches you guys, and we checked you guys out. We saw you on, on the Facebook group. And, and he just started showering us in so much love and so much care and so much uh, um, just wisdom, just giving us so much. The Lord spoke to me on that Sunday that we're going to leave the hotel off of our um, vacation. We're going to leave the hotel on Thursday. He said, just obey me. And I was like, all right, cool. This is what happens when you obey with your spouse. We go out there. We have to check out on Tuesday. And I'm like, all right, we're going to check out. But we're really believing for extra time in the hotel. And we got blessed from our friends and they blessed us. And I was like, all right, cool. We could stay until Wednesday. And then Wednesday came. I mean, uh, it was Tuesday. was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. We got another uh, night for the hotel. Now we're leaving on Wednesday. And we're so excited. We're pumped. Yeah. And he looks at me. You know how prophets look sometimes? They just got these, like, faces. They, he just like. <laughs> and I'm looking at him. I'm like, what's going on? He said, what, do you, what is it? What do you need? I feel like I'm supposed to bless you. God told me to bless you. And I'm like, man, Cold Stone. He was like, all right, cool. And we walk into Cold Stone, and what happened? It was closed. Remodeled. As a matter of fact, not closed, remodeled. So there was no ice cream there. Even if they just opened the door generously, like they, it was nothing. There was nothing in Cold Stone, not even chairs, just a bunch of equipment and construction men. So we leave, and he's like, uh-uh, I can't, I can't just leave. He's like, how can I bless you? How can I help you? And I'm like, man, I was like, we're pretty much good now. We're going home tomorrow. I said, I thought we were staying on until Thursday, but we're going home now. He was like, wait, do you want to leave on Thursday? And I was like, yeah. I've learned the art of just spitting out your pride and just answering what God is trying to do for you. Because a lot of times we reject God's blessings because we think it's humble. 
when just two hours before you rejected the blessing, you was on your knees asking God to provide. Just because it came in the form of a friend or a family member or a stranger, don't give you the excuse to reject the blessing when God tried to show up. Wisdom. So I say, yes. He's like, all right, bet. He said, how much is it a night? I told him. He was like, mm, does this sound better? And I was like, oh, that sounds, yeah, that sounds better. He, he blessed us with more than enough. And we left on Thursday morning because what? We obeyed. We obeyed, we obeyed, we obeyed. I obeyed to preach the gospel. Preaching the gospel opened the door to me and my wife staying in a hotel for another night, meeting a friend, and now he's at the church. Obedience changes lives. You may not be called to start a church with your spouse or a business with your spouse or be a principal of the school with your spouse. That's cool. That's not the only form of ministry. The greatest form of ministry is obedience to God because you can be in vocational style ministry, but still disobedient. So a power couple is a couple that is always willing to obey the Lord, regardless of their dreams or their desires. I wanted to be a designer in the fashion world and then a Christian Jeff Bezos. My wife wanted to do makeup. She was killing it. She had tens and tens of thousands of people following her, all the famous makeup people, all of it. And we, she dropped her makeup bag. I dropped my clothes rack and we followed the gospel. Yeah. Obey. If you get one thing out of this whole message, hold your spouse hand when you're in the car going back home and say, baby, I am vowing to you that I'm gonna live my life obedient to the cross, to Jesus Christ. Whatever he's telling us to do, we're doing. Whatever he's telling us to stop, we're stopping. Whatever he's telling us to adjust, we're gonna adjust. We're just gonna live our lives obedient to Jesus Christ. He wants your whole life, your whole marriage. And my last thought for that one is a power couple isn't perfect. A power couple isn't perfect. However, it is a couple who, who's learned to lay their life down, to live the life Jesus told them to pick up. As a couple, you are called to do something together. I said it last week. It may be cleaning the dishes together. It may be opening your door once a month. It may be hosting a worship night once a year but it's in your home. Ask them, what is it that we're called to do as a couple? It may be intentionally raise kids. When I say intentionally raise kids, you crack open the swords and you teach them the scriptures. Yeah, my pastor hooked us up with a word, but can I take you a little bit further in it? Instead of nagging that your pastor is not the Lord over your, your, your marriage because he's not supposed to be. If your pastor is your Lord, run away. They don't make decisions for you. They influence you into the, the kingdom of God. That's it. You're called to build with your spouse. And that's number seven. Am I doing that one? Yeah. I am? Yeah. And number eight? Overflow? Come on. No, I'm playing. So number seven, this is something that uh, you can jump in too, baby. Um, this is something that um, is super important, but building together. I want you to shout building together. Building together. Let's build together. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Couples, tell your spouse, let's build together. Let's build together. Wow, okay. All right. So we're... <laughs> no more jokes. Okay. Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together except they agree? In other words, it's not possible to walk together if, y'all, if you guys are not holding hands while you're walking. Don't be the hindrance of God trying to move in your family because of personal stuff in your heart. Take it to the king. Take it to him. Take all your baggage to him. 
and he'll help you with it. Hold hands with your spouse. Let them know why you struggle to obey, struggle to build. I told my wife there was times I felt so insecure. I was like, babe, I grew up with a speech and I grew up with a speech problem. I couldn't read out loud. And it wasn't like, oh, we all get nervous sometimes. No, I had a brain. It was a brain issue. I had three teachers in a classroom, one at the front, two on my side. I was in curriculum assistance. I was the only kid in the classroom who wasn't in a wheelchair or wearing a helmet or, or couldn't speak. God radically healed me, but I still was insecure. And then he called me to preach the gospel. And I'm like, all right, cool, coffee shops is my ministry. He's like, no, you're going to plant churches in the north, south, east, and west. You're going to reach millions of people. I said, stop. Why are you trying to embarrass me? I already repented. <laughs> like, please don't, don't do this to me. I'm like, why? It's like, this is what you're called to do. Even when you had a learning disability, I've called you. So I came to my wife and said, hey, I have the insecurity. She said, what is it? I was like, I don't feel like I can properly lead people because I'm not smart enough. And I remember she told me, she was like, well, did God call you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. She was like, no, 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 meditate on that. He called you. Either God don't know what he's doing or he does. Which one is it? So insecurity can't rule and reign in your life. She talked to me about some of her biggest things that was hindering her from building. And you know when someone shared their biggest problems or biggest regrets or something with you and you're like, oh, that's nothing. Got to take care of it. But we can't even share our smallest ones sometimes. You have to ask the Lord, how did I get to a place when I can excuse other people's sins and forgive them? How do I use that same heart? on myself because a lot of times we're crippled to build together because of what happened before. It's a satanic agenda. I have to cripple and ensnare you to your past because I'm intimidated about your future. <laughs> That's a word. The enemy has to cripple you in your past because he's afraid of your future. Because your future is destroying the works of hell. So if he can trick you just enough and delay it, he's okay with it. But you can't be okay with it. You got to stand up and roll. Make them pay. I'm not kidding you. We're making them pay. I tell, I remember, I remember we was in spiritual warfare, really intense, really intense. And what I did was I said, all right, cool. You want to attack me? Now watch this. I start winning souls almost every single day. Almost every single, not every single day, but probably five, five days out of the week. I went someone over to Christ and I felt the grace come in my home. And I knew he backed up. I was like, all right, you keep playing. This whole world will be worshiping Jesus. And I'm like, matter of fact, because you wanted to even try me, now we're about to go real hard. I'm going to pray a little bit longer. I'm going to worship a little bit harder. I'm going to weep a little bit stronger. I'm going to travail a little bit longer. I'm going to go hard now. So we always laugh. We're like, I'm like, why, don't, why does the enemy still try us? If you're wise, just shut up, and then we'll probably calm down. But the more you get loud, the more we get louder. That's the church. And that's how you ought to be as a couple. This is how we build together in our home. I kid you not. We build our prayer life together, our devotion life together, the way we worship. We praise God and worship together as a family. We bring my daughter and I'm like, come here, Trinity, let's worship. We don't force her into it. We let her, we let her be. We let her experience God. And there's times we've saw her encounter Jesus Christ. But she'll like do like this face and like she'll like shake. And I'm like, she's one. One years old. Powerhouse. 
Wow, the stand, we raised the bar in our home. Even when you come over to our house, we don't tolerate anything. If it's apart from Christ, you're going to get set free. Why? Because we like, we like to control the atmosphere in our home and it has to be holy. So you come dull and you leave on fire. It's like heart of God church. There's no in between. You either hate it or you love it. Why? Because we madly love the Lord. We're crazy about him. We'll do anything for him. We'll pack our bags, go to a foreign land and preach the gospel in a tent. I don't care. Why? He saved us. So if we die, what happens? You meet him, but he saved your life. So why are we incubating with our spouse? It, it doesn't make sense. When I, when I met my wife and I knew we, we were in courtship relationship and I'm like, man, I said, are you ready to really lay your life down for Jesus? I'm like, cause I'm gonna marry you. There's no if, ands or buts. It's on like popcorn. I was so happy. I was like, let's go. So we got married less than a year. And I'm like, we're going four, uh, four months dating, four months engagement, got married. And I was like, hey, look, and right before we got married, we had a long talk. And we're like, listen, our marriage, yes, is going to be Snuggies and hot chocolate with whipped cream and just hanging out. I love you, baby. You're so cute. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, all of that. Yeah, cool. But I said, we're also, but we're really called to serve people for the rest of our life. We're really called to live consecrated to the king for our whole life. Are you ready? And boy, the war was on. There was a huge target on our back from heaven. But because you're marked of heaven, hell also got, they got, you got their attention too. So we learned to build our house on the rock the revelation of Christ, who he is, how he is, why he is that way, and who we are in him. And we learn to build that kind of house so when rain came, winds blew, our house was firm. That's not a song we sing. It's actually an instruction manual for you to take. We sing the song so we can get the blueprint, go home, and now build it. Right? So... I want to know something. The same way we often talk to our spouse about finances, the bills, the kids, school, health, everything else, do we have that same heart posture when it comes to talking about spiritual matters? This is not a judgment. This is an invitation to go, hey, let's actually have a conversation about the things of the supernatural and not just seeing angels. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like what's, over, what's around us? What's in our home? Why is it that our kid wake up in the middle of the night screaming to the top of their lungs and we just say, oh, go back to bed. It's fine. He had a nightmare. Where do nightmares come from? I was always called my whole life paranoid. I would go to the parties and I will always leave before something crazy happened. And kid you not, although I was backsliding, I still had the Lord. And he would tell me, hey, leave. I always share the story how I would be in every party you can think of, but I couldn't drink and I couldn't smoke. The furthest I got to drinking was putting it on my tongue. And I come from a family of heavy, heavy, heavy drinkers. But I was always scared to because I had a dream when I was seven years old of the rapture. And I knew I was prophetic. And I said, well, if I get drunk, what am I going to see? <laughs> so I was always scared. So I'm like, my friends get drunk and they can hang out with the girls. I get drunk and I see demons. And I'm like, I'm not trying to do it. So I just said, I'm not going to get drunk. 
But my wife and I have learned to build our house on spiritual truths and not the truths of this world. We've learned how to protect our family. I appreciate your shotgun, but what happens when a demon shows up? <laughs> Can we talk about it? Like it's real. I get it. All right, you got hands. All right, cool. Great. I used to box too. I can knock something down. That's, that's nice. But you can't fight demons. I tried. It don't work. I swung at darkness and dark, and I almost popped my shoulder out. You ever tried to fight a bad dream? Get off me. Oh, shoulders out. You, you fought a demon. that You can't fight them. What is a demon? A person without a body. That's what it is. That's what a spirit is. It's a person without a body. Well, I don't know this stuff. I'm not that spiritual. Figure it out. Learn it. Go get books. Get around other believers. Get around other people. Ask these questions. You don't stumble or fall into pornography. It was a seducing spirit trying to come after you. We don't talk about it now, but then we're irritated later when stuff happens in marriage. This is why we talk about it. It's a, it's a concept called, um, that me and my wife, we do, it's called a fair, that we did, a fair proof your marriage before it start. And it was teaching you how to really walk in purity before you jump into marriage. I tell my wife, I can't kiss you anymore. I said, I don't wanna get comfortable kissing someone that don't belong to me. Cause when we get married, what's gonna change? Wow. She was not mine. She didn't belong to me. So I said, let's stop kissing until we get married. That's why your pastor said, you may now kiss the bride, assuming that you never did. Wow. Just by a show of hands, since it's quiet, make me feel better. Is this helping? <laughs> no, some people. Okay, cool. Praise God. This is so important to understand. You're called to be a disciple, a real one. Having masks on in church is boring. It's tiring. I used to do it. I used to come, snot on the carpet, go home, and live in sin. I break down the, the, the things of warfare because I've, I've overcame it with the help of the Holy Spirit. So I was exposing myself to the men how about eight years ago, nine years ago, I got really set on fire for the Lord. And I realized everything I did before that, I didn't know what I was doing. I was stupid. And then I got saved. And I was like, all right, cool. Now I'm going to build your kingdom. And I was telling the men how I was so bound by pornography. I watched pornography from Monday to Friday. And I didn't watch it on Sunday because, I mean, on Saturday, because I knew the next morning I would wake up and go to church. I was in a prophetic church. And I knew my pastor, would've, he would have saw my sin. And I remember in the midst of that season, I would do it. And every Friday I would stop and I'm like, all right, I'm done. Never again. Next week, Jesus, I'm going to live for you. One more time. That same demon probably spoke to you before. Just one more time and it's over. If I don't expose it, you can't pop the pimple. It has to come up. And then one day the enemy, I mean, uh, the enemy was trying to seduce me, seduce me. And I literally said, well, I can't. It's Saturday. And I'm literally having conversations with demonic powers, not even knowing. I thought it was my mind. Sometimes we think it's our mind playing tricks on us, but it's really demonic inspiration. So I'm sitting there and I said, I can't because it's Saturday. And the Lord speaks to me. Don't you know I see you? I was scared my pastor was going to call out my sin while Jesus was in the room calling me back to him. Since when we have more respect and reverence for the man on stage than we do for Christ Jesus. He's a man. Just a man. Versus God. And in that moment, it broke off of me. I realized, oh my gosh, you were here. I thought you were waiting for me at the church for Sunday. This is where healing is birthed. If you feel uncomfortable, that's a good thing. It's on the way out. 
That's what I tell people in deliverance. I love when people manifest because I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, it's coming out. Like, that's so good. Once the them, them voices start talking, now you, you can, now you know what it is. Oh, wait, this spirit of lust been on my family for years. It stops with me. I'm breaking it off now. Divorce has been on my family for years. It stops with me. I'm breaking it off now. We talked about generational cycles. Jesus already dealt with it. We, that's, that is a revelatory truth. But a lot of times we don't see it in the natural unless we step up and take action towards that truth. So every marriage has a ministry and building together is not just a thing, but sometimes it's intimacy with him. And the last one, then we're going to pray. The last one is number eight. Everybody shout oversight. oversight. Shout oversight. oversight. Proverbs 20:18. it says, plan succeed through good counsel. Don't go to war without wise counsel. Don't go to war without wise counsel. We always tell singles, don't get married without wise counsel. Don't do it. Go get help. I always break it down like this. Everybody needs a Paul, someone who can raise you up. <laughs> Paul in the back said, all y'all need me? Come on. No, but everybody needs a Paul who can raise up Timothy. And everybody needs a Barnabas where you can run with them. And everybody needs a Timothy that you can help raise up. For me and my wife, we have Pauls in our life where they can raise us up. They can call us up higher. But then we have Barnabases, people who can run with us. They can go far with us. We can build. We can plow. We can grow. We can mature. We can do well. And then we also have Timothys that we can raise up. This is so important for your relationship. Please don't be the person who only pour. We used to do that. It was exhausting. Because then what happens is you, is you start hating the moments that you can actually help people. Because you feel like, well, who's going to help me? And it don't have to be your pastor. It could be your parents. It could be your friends, it could be your co-workers, it doesn't matter. Just find someone who will give you biblical counsel to help you move forward. I promise you, you're going to have your Sunday dinner tonight. I feel <laughs> some of you are like, all right, all right, all right, can we just go now? The moment you start feeling that, I promise you, it's because the Lord is trying to deposit something within your heart. I've learned that. The moment I got irritated in church is because God was calling me in and the enemy was scared because he knew if you get that key, it'll unlock doors that the enemy can't shut. It'll unlock doors that the enemy can't stop. And it'll close doors that the enemy can't open again. We all need someone to help us in our marriage. We all need couples who we can do life with. And we all need to be helping the younger couples. And when I say younger, a lot of times we assume that we have to find the oldest person in the church to learn from, or we have to find the youngest person in the church to pour, pour into. But the truth is, we say it all the time, maturity does not come with age. It comes with the acceptance of spiritual responsibility, accepting it. I'm going to say this. How many? Man, this is hard. I'm going to just say it anyway. We're heart of God. So how many people have met an old, a older person absent from wisdom? Wow. Dang, some of y'all hands went up too bold. We got to talk. They said, my boss, I, get, I got you. All right, cool, cool, chill. Give him some grace. But it's so true. And then how many people met some young people who didn't have wisdom as well? I was one. No wisdom. 
Now, how many people met older people who was wise, super wise, like everything flowing from their mouth, like what? And how many people met young people, teenagers sometimes, full of wisdom? This is proof that wisdom is not a human, but it's the person of Jesus Christ. It's his word. So it doesn't matter who it is. Just be led of peace. We need help. Me and my wife, I had to look at her as a grown man in my home. I had to look at my wife and say, I had to give up control. I said, hey, babe, I'm going to be honest. The first year of our marriage, I said, I'm going to be honest. I love you. I care for you. But we need help. I said, I need another man of God to help me. You need another woman of God to help you. We need a couple to raise us up. That was the most annoying thing to tell her because I wanted to be Superman and Captain America at the same time. Best decision. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You ain't got your mic on. No, it, it it was probably one of the best decisions, you know, where we both decided in our heart, like, we need oversight. We need people to, to look into mm -hmm. our marriage and to see the blind spots, to see the things that we don't see. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's when the Lord brought our spiritual parents into our lives. And yeah. it's been the most fruitful addition, you know, mm -hmm. of course, outside of children and everything else mm -hmm. but i'm saying having people to look in yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. telling you have accountability get oversight yeah. and and yeah yeah it's so beautiful and if you got some wisdom in marriage tell someone else yeah. go share with another couple take them out for coffee yeah. if you need friends we it, we used to be just us and jesus who needs friends it's covid we got married in covid we had a wedding and it was April 8th and we were supposed to invite both sides of the family. We were packing it out. And then our friends call us because our friends was the news station because we don't watch the news. We just, we know people in Texas. So like, we ain't got to watch it because you're going to tell me if something happening. So they reached out to us and said, yo, have you guys heard? I'm like, he ain't return, right? No, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what you mean heard? And they were like, yo, COVID-19, this thing called COVID-19, it's COVID-19. I'm like, what? what is that? Sounds crazy. He was like, hey man, we can't even go out the house. You can't gather with more than 10 people. And that's when they passed like the 10 people mandate. And I was like, what? So I call our wedding coordinator and I'm like, yo, we still on, right? God gonna come through. She was like, no, he's not. We're sending y'all your money back. I was like, what you mean? She was like, we can't have y'all here. That's too much people to gather. I'm like, all right, cool. We could go to the church. Our pastor's like, we can't open the doors to the church. We don't own the land. So they can really do what they want. Whoever owns the land wins the war. That's a whole prophetic word for Christians to start owning. So we're like, all right, cool, you know. And then our pastor said, hey, we could get married on Zoom. We can marry you on Zoom. And I was like, hey, I'm, I'm cool. And my wife was like, what? I was like, no, I'm not cool with that, baby. What's wrong with them? They're trying to marry us on Zoom, like, right? I was ready. I'm like, look, let me just marry the woman of God. I'm ready to go. And then and we said no. We start praying, praying, praying. And we started seeing visions of getting married in a, a, a public park. And that's the only place we can go is a park. And we were like, what? Okay. And we got married in a park with 10 people. 10 people. But the beautiful thing with all of that was we prepared. We went to the seminars. We went to the conferences. We bought, oh my gosh, so many books on marriage. Day one wasn't the most important day for us. It was what happens after day one. And then we realized, oh, wait, the counseling don't stop. The wisdom don't stop. Watching the, the sermons on husbandhood and all of this stuff don't stop. It keeps going. And we realize we're called to learn and called to grow. So I want everybody standing. We're going to pray for you. And I want to pray the scripture and we could stand up too, baby. It's Revelation chapter two. OK, 
Okay. And as I'm praying for you and over you, I want you to make it personal. Just connect with the Lord. Just talk to him. Just one on one. Just you and him. You and him. You and him. Revelation chapter two, verse two. Through verse four. It says, I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles, but they're not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. Jesus is honoring it. He's telling them something. That you're doing everything right. Every, all of your actions is great. Your works are great. He's not dishonoring the fact that you're doing things for him. But this next verse is powerful. It says, but I have this one complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you first did. God doesn't want you to get to a place in your life where you do all the, all the stuff. You, you, you plant the churches, you start the businesses, you make a great name for yourself and all of that stuff. But you don't love him no more. You don't love people no more. As you once did, there was a time you used to cry with people. There was a time you used to open the scriptures and weep before the Lord because he was that holy. There was a time when you saw the homeless man and something in you stirred enough to go get him a meal from McDonald's and bring it back to him. There was a time. But as we begin to get distracted by the duties of life, we forgot our first love. That's what I want to pray over you. Marriage is cool and all. But in comparison to who Jesus is and the relationship he wants for you is so much greater. If it wasn't for my relationship with the Lord, I would not be able to love my wife and love other people the way I do. If it wasn't for my wife's personal relationship with the Lord, she would not be able to love me and serve me and, and everybody else the way that she does. I talk to a lot of young ministers and I talked to this one young minister. I'm so ready to preach the gospel, bro. I'm just ready to get, you know, start the ministry, bro. And I was like, I want you to know the moment you become a leader is the same moment the attention is off of you. I know it seemed like it's on you, but it's really not because most people don't care. They don't come to church to hear about you. They come to church to hear how can they increase. Are you willing to lay down yourself, lay down your image, lay down your brand, lay down your whole, whatever you're trying to build, the empire stuff, and pick up the cross to serve people even when it doesn't benefit you? Are you ready? And he was like, oh, bro, like you're kind of intense. Like it's not that deep. And I'm like, he's coming. What do you mean it's not that deep? People are dying every single day. We make church fun and exciting because we know that's going to get you to come. But when you're here, we're not wasting your time. He's on the way. We're an end time church. I really believe that. We're here for one purpose. Prepare the bride of Christ for the return of Jesus. That's it. We want anyone representing this church family or whatever, we want you to be bold as a lion when he cracked that Scottum trumpet's blow. We want you to be hyped. He said, I want you to shrink back and run away from me. I want you to run towards me like there he is. The one I wept about in worship, the one I read about in the Bible, the one I heard about through the preachers and speakers. He's no longer entertainment. He's a real person. He's not like this fantasy that we just dream up. He's real. Your life depends on it. Would you worship him?
Would you worship Jesus Christ for who he truly is? But I don't know how. He'll teach you. He'll teach you how. Your favorite preacher didn't snap his fingers and became your favorite preacher. But he learned to know Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Colossians 3.3, 3, get to know your creator and become like him. Let's pray for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just thank you. Before we thank you for any of us, we thank you for who you are. That you are holy, 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 holy. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. Jesus, we thank you for being present in the room right now, tugging on hearts to believe, tugging on hearts to receive. Lord, we thank you for being the gentle surgeon that anything in us that goes against your word, you can strip it away if we just come and ask you to take it away. I want you to start asking the Lord, take it away, Lord. What is it? Take away the pornography. Take away the, the every now and then drugs. Take away the, the anger, the rage, the jealousy, the envy. Take it away, Lord. We don't want it anymore. We don't want it anymore. We just want you, Jesus. We want to learn to love you, Jesus. We're done playing games. We're done playing church. We don't know when you're coming, but we also don't know when we are going. We need you, Jesus. Let a seriousness get stirred in our hearts. Let go of your religion. Some of you came to hear Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. But what point of, of us <laughs> speaking Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic if we're if we're apart from the one who, who created it all, what's the point? The Bible says you search the scriptures as if in them you find eternal life, but the scriptures speak of me, yet you don't come to me. We don't go to the Bible to find a solution. We go to the Bible to find Jesus. We don't come to church to find a little remedy for our marriage, but we come to church to find Jesus. We don't preach the gospel so people can like us. We preach the gospel so they can worship him. It's all for him. We become in, invisible. So he is made visible. Lord, we let go our prides and our offenses and the people that hurt us, the, 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 all the stuff. Some of you are still bound by the comp, uh, what was it called? The, the, comp, the not compliments of your family. You're still bound because they didn't celebrate you. They didn't celebrate you. They didn't praise you. They didn't, uh, you know, thank God for you when you made that decision. When Jesus is sitting there with a cake, with confetti, wow. With a heart racing, if you just look at me, if you just look at me, son, you will see someone is there cheering for you. If you just look at me, daughter, you will realize there is someone who sees you. Who cares if that guy don't see you? Who cares if that girl don't see you? Who cares if that leader don't see you when God sees you? And he's sitting there waiting for you to say, hey, I'm coming back to you, Lord. While all eyes closed and heads bowed, man, there may be people in the room who don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But you feel it. You know he's true. I could say Allah, I could say Buddha, I could say a lot of names, and it really don't hold that much weight. But when I say the name Jesus Christ, something always happens on the inside of you. It's because he's calling you home. If you're in the room and you're, you're not born again, you don't have a real relationship with Jesus Christ, today's your day of salvation. It's not your wife's faith. It's not your husband's faith. It's not your, 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 your mom, your dad, or your family. It's a personal relationship, and that's what he's looking for. If you're in the room now, on a count of three, I want you to just raise your hands and give Jesus everything you got and just say, that's me. I'm ready to start my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're watching online, I know many people watch online. If you're watching online, I want you to comment in the chat and say, that's me. We're going to have people praying for you after the service online. They're going to get up there and they're going to pray with you, labor with you, talk with you. 
connect with you. But on the count of three, I want you to just shoot your hands up if you really want to give your life to Christ or rededicate it because you wasn't really living for him. One, I believe that this is about to be the greatest decision that you will ever make in your life, greater than marriage, greater than a baby being born. Now picture how beautiful that is. But you coming to Jesus is way beautiful. Two, today all curses flee from you. All bondages flee from you. All of the things the enemy had planned against you, it stops today. Three, if that's you, just raise your hand. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Come on, one, let's go. Come on, come on. It says there's a party in heaven when someone give their life to Christ. So go crazy for that one person right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody, I want one of the men of God, one of the men of God go over them. He's big, so y'all better watch out, but give him a big old hug. Let him know, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. If you're online, we didn't see it in the comments, but I promise you, we always go back and we always watch it and we celebrate. I'm not kidding you. There's times we saw many people saved online and we're in our room like, oh my gosh, I got my do-rag on. She has her bonded on and we're just screaming like, let's go. And I'm so hyped. Why? Because someone just got saved. How beautiful was that? If they came to church for that one thing, to meet him, what an honor that you were able to witness a soul just get transferred from darkness to light instantly. It wasn't like this process of like, oh, Jesus, like halfway in. All right, you're 25% there, buddy. Keep going. Oh, my gosh, you got five more percent. No, no. On the moment he raised his hand, Jesus slipped in. I want you guys as a church family, let's pray this prayer together. And we're going to pray this prayer and invite Jesus into our hearts. If you're already saved, just do it with your family. If you're not saved and you want to get born again, you didn't raise your hand, that's totally fine. Just pray this prayer. If you're watching online, let's pray together as a family. So say, dear Jesus Christ, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for choosing me. In the midst of my sin, you chose me. You loved me. You died for me. You rose for me. I believe you died. I believe you were buried, but I believe you rose again so I may have eternal life. Today I choose life and life more abundantly. Jesus Christ, here's my heart. Do as you please. Here's my life. Do as you please. I am yours. You are mine. On this day, I am a born again Christian. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. One more time. Let's go. Come on. Man, this is precious. What we're about to do um, is what we're about to do. Giving. Okay. That's what we do at church. We give. Okay. So we're going to take a moment to give into God's kingdom. Let me say this. You guys could be seated really quickly. I promise I'm, we're going to leave. I promise. I want to say this. I say it every Sunday and I'm going to say it every Sunday until Jesus returns because I feel like there's a lot of manipulation happening and a lot of manipulation that we experience in the body of Christ when it comes to giving. Let me make this clear. You don't have to give. You don't have to. Some of y'all just got freed. You don't have to give. And I'll go on to say the truth. Matter of fact, if you don't give, God still loves you. Isn't that cool? Like how many people have felt like if you didn't give, you got judged? Wow, we, we got a healthy church. I believed that if I didn't give, God was going to hate me. I used to believe that. But the crazy thing is, he still loves you. And we don't need you to give. We would love for you to give, but we don't need you to. I don't want you to fall under the excuses of, we need your money. We need new this, we need new that. Gotta figure it out. We needed a building and he came through. We needed a drum set and he came through. We needed a guitar and he came through. He's the God of the come through. <laughs> if you wanna give, you can. Your generosity is changing thousands of lives. 
not just the people in the room, but online. Why do I hear you guys give? That should be off. But we thank you for your generosity. Our ushers are going to pass out the envelopes for you to give. If it's an offering, give an offering. If it's a tithe, give a tithe. If it's both, give both. If it's a million, it's spelled M-I-L-L. No, I'm kidding. Just kidding. But we genuinely want you to know that God has such a beautiful plan for your life. It's wonderful. Because of us saying yes, just on YouTube alone, we were able to reach 300,000 people. We were able to reach 300,000 people for the gospel. Just by ministering on YouTube, and we thought it was a joke. We shared about relationships, and we woke up two days later, had 1,000 views, and I was like, why are they watching us? We don't even have a ring light. I'm like, this is weird. We dropped another video, 4,000 views in, I don't know, like an hour or two. It was like an hour or two. And it just, shoot. And I'm like, what is happening? And I'm like, this is not fun. And then I just started to realize behind every number, there's a beating heart. Whether you receive it or not, it still got in you. Uh -huh. People, some people click just to judge. It's the religious spirit. That's the spirit we're called to. We're called to people with the religious spirit. So when you give, you're breaking yokes. You're literally breaking yokes and helping people to have opportunities to experience Jesus Christ. So I want to pray over your seed. Your seed, your, your finances is that seed, but our prayers is the fertilizer. So we want to water it. We want to water it and speak life over it as you give. So Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us the opportunity and privilege to worship you. But there are some parts of the world that can't even gather to worship you, can't even have Bibles. We're so grateful. Lord, we thank you for each and every person who came to church today to hear the message of Jesus. Yeah, we talked about relationships and marriage, but it really was to point to one man, Jesus Christ. Lord, for our online fam who are given, would you surplus them? Would you increase them? Would you rebuke the devourer for their sake and for their advancement? For those who are given here in the building, would you, would you breathe on their professional life? Would you breathe on their finances? Would you help them with opportunities whether it's opportunities of ministry, opportunities of business, opportunities of relational help, would you do it? Of course you would because you're that amazing. So Jesus, here's our offering to you. Here's our offering to you. Here's our tithe. Thank you for giving us the privilege to actually give. So here's our honor towards that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys can go ahead and pass it. As you guys are passing it, you got a word for anyone? We're a prophesying church. Well, many people say a prophesying church. It's not a thing. But we're a prophetic people. All right, somebody raise their hand. Boom. All right, stand up. Both of you, since two people did it. You have a corporate word? So you share it as I pray over these two. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hello? There we go. Um, yeah, when uh, during the teaching, I felt like um, as we were going through these different, like, uh, this different, print, like, step one, two, all of those, not steps, but um, I felt like for some of you in the room, it was almost like mm -hmm. you were, it's like there was, it was almost like you were grieved in your heart because you're hearing these things and you're like, Lord, that's, that, that's a faith pull. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. where it's like, I don't know if I can have that. I don't know if I can experience that. And I feel like the Lord said that today that there were seeds planted within your heart that he yeah. intends to water yes. for the marriage that you desire to see. You, and I feel like he just wanted to encourage you in that today, because I remember even for myself, I was someone who I didn't grow up seeing healthy marriages. There were div countless divorces and it honestly was a faith pull. But the Lord had planted that seed within my heart. And and thank God I, I look back and I'm like, wow, Lord, thank you for planting that seed within my, within my heart and watering that seed to where now we have a God fearing marriage. And so yeah, I just pray that that's yeah. encouragement to some of you, if it's one of you in the room, but the Lord just says that that seed was planted because he desires and intends to water it. Yeah, yeah. Man, if you can raise your hand, if you experience that, maybe broken families, divorce like crazy, keep your hands up. My wife is going to bless you in prayer. We're going to pray for you. And if you have not experienced that or you did, but you've overcame it or whatever, I want you to be praying with us. God is about to heal some hearts. Do you believe it? All right, just two of you. That's all I need. Just two people to believe it. Right? All right, so baby, let's pray. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus, I just thank you so thank much, you, Lord. Lord. I thank you so much for who you are, Jesus. Yes. I thank you for your precious spirit, Lord. And you see the hearts of man, Lord. You see what is upon their hearts, Lord. And you see their walk. Yeah. You know what it is that you've walked through, what they've walked through, Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the yes within their hearts, Lord, that mm. says I, I, that they won't experience what it is that they walked through, that their future won't be a reflection of their past, Come Lord. On. We break off right now in the name of Jesus. Anything generationally in regards to divorces, in regards to adultery, Lord, make that yeah. decision. Those of you who raised your hand, make that decision within your heart. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the marriages, Lord. I thank you for giving them fresh hope right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for planting that seed within their hearts, Lord, for the marriages, Lord, that they desire to see, Lord, the marriages that you first see, Jesus. Mm. And so we submit that request unto you, Lord, and we thank you for watering it, Lord. We thank you for your word washing over it, Jesus, to where each and every one of those who raised their hands and even for yeah. those who didn't, I thank you, Lord, that they will be able to look back and say that they drew the line in the sand and they stepped over that they stepped over that threshold and into the open doors that you had for them, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we submit that unto you, Lord, and we say it is so yeah. in Jesus name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. So, uh, when do what was your name again? Who stood up? Yeah. Sam. Tim, okay, you stand up too. I asked you guys to raise your hand. Um, when we say we're a prophetic church, we mean we're a prophetic church. And one of the things we like to do is, is get thrown on the spot to prophesy the word of the Lord. For those who don't know what prophetic is or prophecy is, it's where a person hears from God and communicates to man. It's one of the sweetest things in the world that God will use a complete stranger or someone you know, it doesn't matter, to speak a word of encouragement into you. And I want you guys to just confirm if it's true or false, we won't get offended. It's, a, it's don't lie in church, that's the worst thing to do, right? Um, so for Windu, um, when I saw you and you raised your hand, it's like once your hand went up, it's like you had a, um, a weight in it. Like you had a weight, it was like a dumbbell. And you raised your hand and I saw you like pick up this weight and I was asking the Lord, what does that weight mean? And he began to speak to me that the weight that you are carrying is the weight of leadership. The weight that you are carrying is a weight that's called shift. Shift. I feel like he's about to make a radical shift in your life. Where you're going from one place of knowing ministry to a whole different place where God is really calling you to go into dungeons. He's calling you to go into deep, dark places to rescue men who, who was hurt men who was abused, men who was abandoned, men who was accused. I really see you rescuing the hearts of men, but I believe God is about to blow on your, on your mind when it comes to receiving revelation of the word of God. I feel like you've made some recent sacrifices uh, concerning your personal life where God is about to use that to promote you in wisdom. You've made a smart decision. I hear the Lord saying you made a smart decision because it's gonna keep your heart tender it's going to keep your heart clear. So when he begins to speak to you, you know it's God. So I really believe that a shift is coming to your life to promote you in God's kingdom because you've laid your, I see you, I literally saw you laying in like your living room or something and you were crying out to God for, for something different. You didn't want normal. It was like you were screaming out to him. Like I need something different. I need a change. I need something. I need acceleration. Just do it. Right. And it wasn't from a place of you were greedy. It was a place from you were hungry. 
It was a desperation on your lips saying, God, fill me again. Fill me again. So I'm going to pray for you and release the fire of God on you. So, Father, if, if someone's near him, just put your hand on them. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, would you fill him again? Would you fill him again? Fill him again. Fill him again with your power, with your wisdom, with your stanima. I hear the word stanima. Lord, give him stanima to do exactly what you have called him to do. I hear the Lord saying, stop trying to figure out all the ins and outs and the details and just obey me every step of the way. Just obey me in every step of the way. If it's a small group, just obey me in a, every step of the way. If it's a, a prayer night for men, just obey me in every step of the way. You will speak. I hear the Lord saying, you will speak. You will speak. People will book you to speak and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when the time comes, don't hold back what's in you. When the time comes, don't hide what he has given you. The Lord has given you such a prophetic anointing. But there's many times where you can be bold about your prophetic gift, but only around prophetic people. And when there's non-prophetic people in a room, it's almost like you get afraid. What would they think? But the Lord said, I placed you around non-prophetic people so you can show them what fire look like. Get ready for a series of dreams concerning your calling. Lord, I just pray right now over his dream life that you begin to speak to him and show him the instructions that you have for him concerning this time in Jesus' name. Amen. And for Tim, I begin to see this thing happen in your mind. And I don't know you personally. I don't know your story, but I did see you as a kid. And it's like you were tormented up here. You were tormented up here where it's like you couldn't think straight. Your thoughts would get away from you. You would know stuff and then you forget stuff. You would sense something, but you would think that you're going crazy. And I saw the Lord doing something up here. And it's really just this creative anointing that he has put upon you. This creative ability that you're called to pioneer from behind the scenes, but it's going to promote what's in front of the scene. And I believe that God is going to use you as a true pioneer when it comes to creativity. This is making sense to you? Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> I love it. Come on, that's beautiful. But I just believe God is about to do something very, very beautiful for you. Let me pray for you really quickly. I feel God about to do something. Father, I thank you for this mighty man of God, Tim. I thank you for the mind that you have given him, that you have given him the mind of Christ, even when he thought he didn't have it. Even when he didn't believe that he was a new creation, he still was a new creation. Lord, I pray right now that you stir up the fire of God on the inside of him. Thank you, Jesus. I also see in you, you need to connect with Windu because both of y'all could do this together. I see you going out and hitting the streets and evangelizing, preaching the gospel with fire and boldness. There's a boldness that God has placed on you. You were bold for the kingdom of darkness. And when God saved you, the enemy tried to keep you from being bold. But Lord, I pray that you make them bold. Make them bold to preach the gospel. Make them bold to declare the word of God. Make them bold to ask people, do you know Jesus Christ? Lord, I thank you that he's a person that people are not afraid to get around. He carries such a gathering anointing. He can gather a hundred unbelievers for an event that promotes Jesus. But Lord, help him. Help him. Help this man of God to see clearly. And Lord, I hear you saying to impart to him the prophetic anointing that you have put on my family. Lord, I release that oil you on him. The same anointing that you've given me, give it to him double. I release that anointing of words of knowledge, of words of wisdom, of miracles, seeing deaf ears open. Let it happen. I hear the Lord saying, step out this week. In this week, you're going to see a miracle. Not a headache, not a little back pain. I'm, I said a miracle. In this week, you're going to encounter somebody, maybe in a cast. It's like I see this lady walking in a cast on her right foot. Remember this. Thank you, Jesus. This woman with a cast on in her right foot. 
And the Lord is going to use you to pray for her. And she's going to come out of the cast. I'm, I'm saying this. And you come to church. You're going to come to church next week. So there is going to be proof if God spoke to you or not. So, Lord, I just pray that you give him the boldness. You give him the boldness. You give him to eye, the eyes to see. You give him the sensitivity to feel. You give him the courage to take action. You give him the wisdom to walk in your timing. I don't know if you do music, but I see something really musically coming on you. Thank you, Jesus. He's shaking his head. That's good. Come on. I see. <laughs> Hold on. So, Father, I just thank you. It's like I saw him, man, I saw you, and, and this may be far off, but I saw you producing stuff, and I saw you mixing stuff and making beats, and, and it, was, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty dope. Lord, I ask that you do that for him, for Jesus. Lord, I ask that you increase his, his prophetic sight to see and hear, woo, hear the songs before they're played. That's what it is. He's giving you anointing and anointing to hear the songs before they are played. Before the artists come to you, there's going to be a beat stirring up in your heart already. Watch this. Man, sometimes I wish you could just follow up all the time, but you can't all the time. I feel like God is about to launch you. He's about to launch you. Not just media, but I see you about to walk, you're about to walk heavy in music. I don't think you even wanted media all the way anyway. I think it was music that, you, that you're called to. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Finally, right? I love it. So, Father, I thank you for this precious man of God. Would you stir up the gifts of the Spirit in him? Would you keep him up to seek your face? In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Okay. Let's give God glory real quick. <laughs> Man, I could go to sleep in these couches, but I'm not, I promise. Guys, we're about to just go ahead and go ahead and uh, leave and, and go and um, anything else? Do you have something? Nope. Are you sure? Positive. You positive? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, hang out. If you need prayer, just come to the front. Personal. I need prayer for my marriage. I need prayer for my finances. I need prayer for my family. Run to the front. Do not feel ashamed. We're a family. We're going to have prayer ministers who come up here, and they're going to labor with you. Yeah. And you guys could come up now if you want to. They're going to pray with you. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, come to the front. Yes. The fire of God is going to fall on you. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. How many people do not speak in tongues right now? Like you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. Why we got all these tongue talkers in the room? Let's go. Come on. But some of y'all shy. Don't be shy. That's not a fruit of the Spirit. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, pretend you're coming up here for finances and let them feel you. They're going to feel you. They're going to feel you. So we're going to pray for you. and then We're going to go play some basketball, hang out, and just meet you guys. So, Father, we just thank you. Baby, you pray. Lord, I just, well, Lord, we just thank you so much, Jesus, for who you are, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit, Lord, and I thank you for this precious time together, Jesus. I thank you for your word being released, Lord, and I thank you for it settling into our hearts, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would remind us of your truth, that you would remind us of your word, that you would bring it back to our remembrance as we go forth in our week, Lord. I bless everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, and I just thank you so much, Jesus, for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go give some hugs before you leave and we'll see you guys next time.
Hello, 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 heart of God. I pray that you're all well in Jesus' mighty name. What an amazing, amazing. <sighs> it was so powerful, isn't it? I pray that you all took it in and heard what the Lord wanted to say um, to you. But let us know in the chat, what were your takeaways from what you heard um, today and what the Lord was revealing to you? What were you, your takeaways? One of the things I would say is obey, obey, be willing and obey. And that is so powerful in and of itself to do, because as the Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice obedience is better than sacrifice so i would love to pray with you today so if you have any prayer requests drop them in the chat even if it's just one word let us know how we can um how we can pray for you um so just to introduce myself my name is simina i'm lead of online prayer ministry and um, we also have um, Kiana, who's in the chat, who's also part of online prayer ministry as well. So one of the things Kiana said is, I think submission as a couple was a great takeaway for me today. Yes, yes, submission. So important, so important. But we would love to know your takeaways. So do put them in the chat as well. So I'm just going to scroll through to check if there are any um prayer requests as i said drop your prayer requests in the chat i'd love to pray for you and stand in faith for what you're believing for as well yes while i do that i i wanted to share one one word that i believe the holy spirit was uh, leading me to share and that was for sam sprout for sam sprout um, Sam, one of the things I believe the Lord was just showing me is that you're in a time or even going to be in a time where you're, you're making decisions, where you have to make decisions. And the Lord wants you to know that you are the righteousness of him, of God in Christ Jesus. And the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So the Lord is ordering your steps in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Yes. OK, I see some um, things in the chat. Welcome, Raquel. Welcome, um, Elizabeth. Lovely to see you. So as Raquel said, your past will look nothing like your future. That was my takeaway. Yes. Perfect. Exactly. In the name of Jesus, your past will look nothing like your future. God has a bright future for you, Raquel in jesus my team he has good plans for you as it says in jeremiah 29 11 you know take take that to heart know that god has good plans for you that is for you he has got good plans for you and as you seek him and agree with him and walk with him you will see those plans unfold in jesus name so elizabeth said my takeaway not to doubt god i was one who had a faith pull after being through two divorces okay exactly you know doubting doubting god is one of their enemy's tactics to stop you from walking in faith mark 11 23 onwards actually talks that this, talks about this it says jesus when you speak to the mountain Command it to be thou removed and cast itself into the sea and do not doubt in your heart. You shall have whatever you say. So doubt in the heart is something that can actually prevent the very things that you're believing for and walking in faith from coming to pass. And a way to get rid of doubt in your heart is to esteem God who he is and his ability in the situation more than that very thought that's trying to come against, that thought that's trying to rise up against the very knowledge of God in your mind. Um, so I'm just going to look at uh, the comment. Powerful Raquel. Yes. Thanks, Kirina. Raquel said. Um, 
Sam said spot on, or oh, we give God the glory. We give God the glory. Yes, the Lord is ordering your steps. Sam, the Lord is ordering your steps. So you don't need to feel like you're being pulled between, you know, two decisions. You don't need to feel that you're being pulled between them both. God has a way for you to choose and literally just be still in him and know that he is God. Be still in him and know that he is God as well in Jesus' name. And Sam, I had another thing that I believe the Holy Spirit was just highlighting. But just let me know, are you... um? Are you um, working a job at the moment? Or is that something that you're looking into at all? But let me know. Let me know if that's um, correct or anything like that. And then Raquel said, thanks, Simna, amen. Oh, we give God the glory. God is good. God is good. God is good. But yes, do let me know um, about any if you any other takeaways these are good let's encourage each other and let's remind each other of the very things that you know we've been listening um today and as the holy spirit is leading us from the wisdom that we received today in jesus mighty name this saw sam said yes i'm working i'm working right now i was just going i was just discerning but are you looking for another job are you looking to move into almost like a higher position, something that is closer to um, the desire that you have on your heart. And then Raquel said, I wouldn't mind prayer for my family. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Let's pray for your family. So Heavenly Father, we give you the glory, give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you that you are good, Lord. Thank you that you are God. (laughs) That you never leave us nor forsake us, so that we can confidently say that you are our helper, we shall not be afraid. What can man do to us? Nothing. Heavenly Father, I commit Raquel's family onto you. I commit Raquel's family onto you. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that they have a deeper revelation of you in the name of Jesus. That even the ones that don't know you, Heavenly Father, will become saved in Jesus' mighty name. And that there will be restoration in the family in Jesus' mighty name. I don't know whether, I was just discerning whether there was like quarrels or arguments that had separated some of the family. Raquel. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that labourers go forth to each one of her family members, that family members become healed and saved in the name of Jesus, that they have a revelation of the Lord and that there will be a restoration in that family and they will all rise to their kingdom purpose in the name of Jesus for the glory of God's name and they will fulfill the calling that God has, that you Lord have on their life in Jesus' mighty name. And I speak healing. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Whoever whoever is sick or that is going going through any issues in the name of Jesus, I speak healing over their bodies right now in Jesus' mighty name. We command disease to leave in Jesus' mighty name. We say that it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. And we speak total restoration to their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are Jehovah Jireh. Our provider, Lord, and thank you, Lord, for being a provider for Raquel's family, that they will see you as their provider, Lord, and without a doubt, they will believe. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to go through the chat. Okay, so... Yes, I'm going to share that, Kiana. And also, Kiana, feel free to put that in the chat as well, but I'll also speak out what um, you've written to me. Um, okay. Raquel said, my mum looks after my son. It's difficult. And my sister, we have a difficult relationship. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 
So, okay, so, well, we thank God. We thank God. We speak. Well, we pray for restoration. Okay. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray for restoration in Jesus' mighty name. Hello, Antonia. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You can definitely watch it back, Antonia. <laughs> but let us know if you have any prayer requests, or even just the word that you want us to share. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing, Sam. You're not currently looking for one. However, if the opportunity presents itself, you will not be opposed to it. I just believe, I, I just, I will share what I believe I heard the Lord say, but promotion promotion i really believe increase is coming um to you in regards to work or even things also that um things that you are calling uh, god is calling for you to do in regards to work in terms of you putting your hands to things i really believe that for you um and i'm just going to read out what um kiana said so um she said for elizabeth she feels like god is saying invite him in the process that she knows that um, you spoke about marriage, but God wants to be in the process and the decisions um, that she's making and will make in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kiana, for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, Elizabeth. Finances and provision. I have until Friday to pay off my tuition balance before financial withdrawal. Also looking for roommates. Um, to help contribute towards Talise. Okay, well, let's let's stand in faith, Elizabeth. Let's stand in faith with you. Contribute towards Talise. Yes, okay. So, Heavenly Father, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, who you are. Thank you, Lord, for your love for Elizabeth. Thank you, Lord, that she's constantly on your mind. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you are her provider. That you've blessed the works of our hands. Heavenly Father, our request is about finances and provision. And Lord, we acknowledge that you are Jehovah Jireh, her provider. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that her tuition balance, her tuition balance will be paid for in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for providing for her. And she also mentions that she's looking for roommates to help contribute towards the lease. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that roommates are provided for her. The very people, Lord, that you have in the name of Jesus, the very people that you have called, Lord, to help contribute towards the lease for her. Thank you, Lord, for providing those very people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I also believe this same thing for you, Elizabeth, that the Lord is calling you to put your hands to things that God is going to provide for you through. Is that he's going to provide finances for you through. I think there's some ideas that you might have received just in the in, in, in the moment where you kind of put aside and never really delved into it too much. Um, I know I think I think you're doing business already or things like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I think that's what I remember that you told us last time. But I actually believe that there are ideas that you've received where um, you've put them down and God wants to remind you and he will bring things to your remembrance again, you know, in the name of Jesus and things that you're going to put your hands to that will allow cash flow. Things that you might not even remember right now, but God is going to bring ideas to you and bring things back to your remembrance, I believe, in Jesus mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Sam said, Amen. I receive it. Amen, amen. Oh, we give God the glory. God is so good. God is so, so good. God is so faithful. <laughs> God is so faithful. Well, it's lovely to see you all here. It's been a blessing to pray um, with you all, for you all to stand in faith in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, and Kiana said, love you all. <laughs> oh, we give God the glory. But yes, and also do share testimonies. Do share testimonies as well. 
We would love to hear the things that God has done for you in Jesus name. I just see Elizabeth's comment says, yes, you're correct. Thanks for the word and prayer. Amen. Amen. Yes. So we thank God for finances coming to you, Elizabeth, in the name of Jesus. We thank God for provision coming to you in the name of Jesus. And also those ideas that you may have put down in the name of Jesus that you you will go through it again with the Lord and be led by the Lord to put your hand to those things in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus' name. Well, I pray that you will have a blessed week. I'm going to pray for you all right now before we go. And in the name of Jesus, see you all next Sunday for more of the word of God. So, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we give you the glory, give you the praise. We give you the glory, give you the praise. Lord, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. Lord, I pray for everybody here, everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will have days and days and the rest of the year to come where they will increase in the knowledge of you, Lord, in seeking you and knowing you and spending time with you, Heavenly Father. Also pray, Lord, that as they seek you, Lord, that they will give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that eyes of the heart is enlightened, Lord, to what you have um, for them. Thank you, Lord, for leading them in the name of Jesus. And I pray that they have a sensitivity to your voice where they choose to be willing to obey what you've called them to do in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for a blessed week ahead, doing all the things that you've called them to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're protecting them, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Every tongue that has risen up against them in judgment, we condemn in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that they're covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that angels encamp around them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for leading them, for guiding them and for directing them. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. And another thing that the Lord, Elizabeth, I even think that, so, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but did God tell you another idea yesterday? Another idea yesterday. Another idea yesterday. For something for you to put your hand to, another idea, you know, that you could incorporate or, or do or put your hands to. So I'm just seeing another prayer request. And Tony, yes, let's pray. Let's pray. Antonia said, still pray to get a new job. God told me not to apply for any more jobs, but to wait for the job he has for me. It's been a while. Okay, okay. Well, let's pray for you, Antonia. And if, if God has said not to apply for any more jobs, it's to be obedient to what, um, you know, God is saying, but wait for the job he has called you. So, Heavenly Father, our Lord, we bring Antonia's prayer request to you, Heavenly Father. Lord, Heavy Father, we we pray over we pray over her sensitivity to you, Lord, to hear the very job that you've called her for her to do. Thank you, Lord, for providing that very job that you've called her to do, Lord, and to help her rely on you in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you the glory, give you the praise that you are her provider. That you are the one that opens doors. That you are the one that favours. Thank you, Lord, for, for helping our heart to be willing to obey you. In Jesus' name, amen. And Tony, I believe I'm hearing the Lord say, there's something that he told you to do last. There's something that he told you to do last. What's the last thing he told you to do? And it may even be another, th it may be a thing which draws in income. It's a lot about income today. We give God the glory. <laughs> it's a lot about finances today. But seriously, I think discern, and if you, if, if you don't remember, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to bring things back to your remembrance to remind you. But is there something that God's told you last to do that you're yet to do? 
and it may involve you know bringing in that provision as well okay so i'm just seeing the chats so elizabeth said yes yeah elizabeth that idea take it to the lord take it to the lord and let him let him lead you in it let him guide you let him let him speak to you about it because as i was praying over everyone just now i believe i heard the lord say tell her about the, uh, the idea that was said to you yesterday that was that was said to you yesterday so take it to the lord and let the lord give you vision and strategy and wisdom in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name but I really believe the Lord has a lot of us that there are things that God wants us to put our hands to. There are things that God wants us to put our hands to. You know, that he that He is going to bring cash flow and provision through. So let's 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 heed the voice of the Lord, be willing to obey and, and sit with him in anything that um we need help reminding God is faithful. He will remind us. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our comforter, our teacher. He leads us into all truth. He shows us things to come. He brings back to remembrance all that God has taught us and told us. But in the name of Jesus, we give God the glory. God is bringing provision. Yes. Kiana, God is bringing provision. Elizabeth said, thanks for the direction. Amen. We give God the glory. We give God the glory. We really do. We really do. But yes, Antonia, do and do let us know. Do let us know. If there's something that God told you to do last that involves um, provision with cash flow. It involves provision with cash flow. Yeah, I don't know whether her thing is slightly behind. I just want to wait to see if she does put something um, in the chat. But yes, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to be with you all. And make sure you do share this. Share this live with others. Let others receive the word because best believe relationships is an area where you know, God, God help us all. <laughs> God help us all. Uh, relationships in terms of even friendships, friendship relationships, family relationships, spouse relationships. Let's all grow together. Let's all be disciple together in his word and receive what the Lord is saying. And receive what the Lord is saying. Yes, make sure that you do go back over this and study with the Lord study with the lord in terms of what his word says concerning how we're to obey him but also submit in that type of relationship as well okay well i don't see any more comments but antonia if you are watching this later or you're just watching this as a delayed um in a delayed time do leave your comments in the chat. I will see them later and I can respond either later or even the, the next live as well. I would I would love to just stand in faith with you and, you know, also just in the name of Jesus, the testimony that you will have um, from this in Jesus' mighty name is going to be powerful. So everyone have a blessed week. Have a blessed week ahead. Remember to do what the Lord has called you to do. Spend time with the Lord. Be with him and be led by him in everything you do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless everyone. See you next week.